Good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this morning's morning prayer. Today is Thursday, the 26th of October. And so we are thankful to God for a new day. It's a rainy, wet day here in London. But we pray, we pray, we bring the day to our God. We bring the concerns of our lives, individual, personal, communal, and indeed the lives of the people in our world before God, our gracious Savior. So let's pray as we begin this new day. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God, who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. And our psalm this morning is um, Psalm 143. And this morning we are remembering Alfred, king and scholar, who died in 899, and said, Saint said, abbot and bishop who died in 664. So we remember two of the old saints of this country, King Alfred, 899, and Saint said in 664. And so our psalm this morning, this morning is Psalm 143. Psalm 143. <clears throat> Show me, O Lord, the way that I should walk in. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and in your faithfulness give ear to my supplications. Answer me in your righteousness. Enter not into judgment with your servant. For in your sight shall no one living be justified. For the enemy has pursued me, crushing my life to the ground, making me sit in darkness like those long dead. My spirit faints within me. My heart within me is desolate. I remember the time past. I muse upon all your deeds. I consider the works of your hands. I stretch out my hands to you. My soul gasps for you like a thirsty land. O oh Lord, make haste to answer me. My spirit fails me. Hide not your face from me, lest I be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your loving kindness in the morning for in you I put my trust. Show me the way I should walk in, 
O I lift up my soul to you. Deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies, for I flee to you for refuge. Teach me to do what pleases you, for you are my God. Let your kindly spirit lead me on a level path. Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake. For your righteousness' sake, bring me out of trouble. In your faithfulness, slay my enemies and destroy all the adversaries of my soul. For truly, I am your servant. Show me, O Lord, the way that I shall walk in. And glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And our prayer, Jesus, our companion, when we are driven to despair, help us through the friends and strangers we encounter on our path to know you as our refuge, our way, our truth, and our life. Amen. Amen. All right, let's let's move on. It's a great psalm to meditate on, but let's move forward. Let's go to our first reading. <clears throat> our first reading is uh, Ezekiel, Ezekiel forty-three. So we are in that part of Ezekiel where Ezekiel is prophesying prophesying about the future, the future restoration of God's people. So we are in chapter 43, and uh, we are reading from verse 1 to 12. Verse 1 to 12. So Ezekiel is envisioning a time when God will return, will bring back his people and return with them. All right, let's, let's read it and then reflect. Ezekiel 43. After this, the man brought me back around to the east gateway. Suddenly, the glory of, God of, of the God of Israel appeared from the east. The sound of his, coming, of his coming was like the roar of rushing waters, and the whole lands, landscape shone with his glory. This vision was just like the others I had seen, first by the Kibar River, and then when he came to destroy Jerusalem, I fell face down on the ground. And the glory of the Lord came into the temple through the east gateway. Then the Spirit took me up and brought me into the inner courtyard, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. And I heard someone speaking to me from within the temple while the man who had been measuring stood beside me. The Lord said to me, Son of man, this is the place of my throne and the place where I will rest my feet. I will live here forever among the people of Israel. They and their kings will not defile my holy name any longer by their adulterous worship of other gods or by honoring the relics of their kings who have died. They put their idol altars right next to mine, with only a wall between them and me. They defiled my holy name by such detestable sin, so I consumed them in my anger. Now, let them stop worshipping other gods and honouring the relics of their kings, and I will live among them forever. Son of man, describe to the people of Israel the temple I have shown you, so they will be ashamed of all their sins. Let them study its plan, and they will be ashamed of what they have done. Describe to them all the specifications of the temple, including its entrances and exits, and everything else about it. Tell them about its decrees and laws. Write down all these specifications and decrees 
as they watch, so they will be sure to remember and follow them. And this is the basic law of the temple, absolute holiness. The entire top of the mountain where the temple is built is holy. Yes, this is the basic law of the temple. Amen. The word of the Lord. All right, so as I said, so now um, God is giving Ezekiel a vision of the return to, to the temple. That is, God is returning to the temple. God's glory is going back. To the temple. If you remember way back at the beginning of the book, Ezekiel had a vision of God's glory leaving the temple. And 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 um and of course, you know, it's like the building, God has left the building. There is the the the, the people who were there were worshiping, but God was no longer there. Now God is returning to the temple, the glory of God is coming back to the place where God's people are now to gather and worship. And, and so God is, in form, is, is, is speaking to Ezekiel and showing him this. And Ezekiel is in a spiritual trance. The Lord is taking and giving him a vision. To, I mean, Ezekiel is still in, in Babylon, but vision, he's, he's been taken in a vision to Jerusalem to see the renewed temple, the rebuilt, the, 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 the restored temple. Um, where God is now going to dwell. And the people are going to come and they're going to get rid of their idols and so on. And the, uh, verse 12 says that basic law of the temple is absolute holiness. Absolute holiness. Holiness is going to be the, the watchword of the new temple. Um, God's temple is to be holy. Holy, holy means set apart for the purpose of God. The people are to be holy. The temple are to be holy. That, that there is no mixture or mingling of paganism with the God of the with, with, with the God of, of Israel. No way. This God is to be worshipped in holiness, set apart, to be pure, uh, and, and to be to 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 have there should be no no, no other God with this God and so absolute holiness the entire mountain where the temple is built is to be holy that is remember holiness means to be separate to be set apart for the for the sole purpose of of God and um, when we say something is holy we you know we, we're saying that it, it is dedicated and uh, and committed for the purpose of of God alone Nothing else is to be used, this is to be used for. The temple is to be used only for the worship of God. The mountain, everything there is to be holy. The basic law of the temple is holiness, absolute holiness. And, and of course, the fullness, the, the, full, the, the fullness of the temple is fulfilled in the coming of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the temple. Um, in which God's glory dwells. And of course, when he, when he left earth, when he, when he ascended into heaven, he sent his, his spirit, which is again a representation of his glory upon the people that he left behind, the church. And so now God's glory dwells in the people of God. Uh, and now we are the temple of God. We are set apart. We are to be absolutely holy. That is set apart for for God. We are to be totally committed to be to be used by God. That is what absolute holiness means. To be to be dedicated for the service of God and God alone. Amen. Let's uh, let's move to our New Testament reading which is John chapter uh, 15, 16, John chapter 16, and um, John chapter 16 from verse uh, 1 to 15, John 16 from verse 1 to 16. Uh, 
No, 1 to 15. I've gone 16, 1 to 15. <laughs> Jesus is speaking. Jesus said, I have told you these things so that you won't abandon your faith. For you will be expelled from the synagogues. And the time is coming when those who kill you will think they are doing a holy service to God. This is because they have never known the Father or me. Yes, I am telling you these things now, so that when they happen, you will remember my warning. I didn't tell you earlier because I was going to be with you for a while longer. But now I am going away to the one who sent me, and not one of you is asking where I am going. Instead, you grieve because of what I have told you. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away, because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I, do, if I do go away, then I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Righteousness is available because I go to the Father and you will see me no more. Judgment will come because the ruler of this world has already been judged. There is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you, what the, he will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is, what I, this is why I said the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. This is God's word. Thanks be to God. So Jesus is telling again his disciples, he's teaching them that he's going away. And reminding them that when he goes, he will not leave them as orphans, as he said elsewhere. But the Spirit is going to come, the advocate, the counselor, the, 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 the one who is going to come alongside them as it, to comfort them. And, and, to, and to enable them to live, uh, to live in the truth, the spirit of truth. Uh, we are told he's called the spirit of truth. Because he will guide us into all truth. Um, it is the Holy Spirit who will guide us into the truth of God's word. That is why, that is why we, cannot, we cannot understand God's truth without the Spirit. The natural man, says Paul, cannot understand the spiritual things because, uh, because they are spiritually discerned. They are, they, are, they are revealed by the Spirit. You know, I, and, and that's why many people will read the Bible and not understand what they're reading because they are natural. They don't have the Spirit of God. They don't have the Spirit of truth. It is the Spirit of truth who will guide us into all truth. And, and we are to, it's when we avail ourselves to be used by the Spirit. is when we surrender ourselves to be to be empowered and to be filled and uh, with with the spirit that we that we are led into the truth of God Jesus says he will bring me glory that is the spirit will glorify Jesus and again you, you could use this as a sort of test to see what the spirit is doing the spirit doesn't draw attention to himself the spirit draws attention to Jesus the spirit's the Spirit's uh, job, the, Spirit, the work of the Spirit is, is to point us to Jesus. Not to point us to himself, but to point us to him. 
to glorify him. Um, so he will bring glory to me by telling you whatever he receives from me. He, the Spirit is going to teach us about Jesus. You know, this is, um, it is one of those fundamental teachings of Scripture. That the, the work of the Spirit is to teach us about Jesus. Is to enlighten us about Jesus. Not about himself so much, but about Jesus. Only in so far as the Spirit is connected to Christ indeed as part of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Um, and one of the work of the Spirit, we are told, when he, when he comes, he will convict the world of sin and of God's righteousness and of coming judgment. So, you know, the, 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 the Spirit is, while he comes to teach us the truth of God, he has come to convict the world of sin as well. Um, the world's sin is the refusal to believe in Jesus. The Spirit will convict the world of their sin. Righteousness is available because I go to the Father and you will see me no more. The, the Spirit's job is to lead us into all that is right and good and proper. Righteousness and judgment will come because the ruler of this world has already been judged. And so he, he, the Spirit comes to bring judgment as well. Judgment upon the world and indeed upon the ruler of this world. The, the God of this world who is the devil, Satan, who has blinded the eyes of those in the world so they cannot see. The Spirit is come to bring judgment, to bring righteousness and to convict of sin. And, um, and so we thank God for this, the coming of the Holy Spirit into our world and indeed into our lives. And we pray that the Holy Spirit will work in us and through us, but indeed in the world to change our world, to transform the evil and wickedness of our world into holiness unto the Lord, into the temple of God, a place where holiness dwells. Let's pray. <coughs> Our Father, we are grateful for your grace another day. We thank you, Lord, that you've brought us again to this, to a new day. It is indeed a day we have never seen before and indeed we shall never see again. And so, Lord, we ask that this day will be, <clears throat> will be used for your glory. We pray for your Holy Spirit, for your Spirit to lead us into all truth, to convict the world of sin, of righteousness and judgment. Lord, lead us into all, all that is right and true. And Lord, we show us the way that we should go so that we may walk in it. And Lord, we pray as we, we reflect on the temple of, of, of the temple of the Lord as a place of holiness, of absolute holiness. We pray that you will make us your temple, the temple, your church, uh, your body on earth, of uh, absolute holiness, a place, a place where only you dwell, a place that is set apart, a people indeed. That is set apart for you. Called out of darkness into your marvelous light. A people who are your holy nation. Your peculiar people. Your righteous people. And so Lord make your church we pray. The place, the people, the temple that is set apart for you. To be holy unto the Lord. Oh, the Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit will empower us. May the glory of your Spirit enter this temple, uh, this body, this church, our church, your church, the, uh, the church, indeed, the entire church of the living God, the pillar and foundation of truth. We pray that we will be empowered by your spirit, that we will reflect your glory in the world. 
So Lord, empower us today afresh, we pray, so that we will bear, we who bear your name, may show forth in our lives, in our words, in our actions, that we belong to God, that we are, we are the body of Christ on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, Lord, as we continue to pray for the world, a world, a world that is lost in darkness, in the darkness of sin and evil and violence and wickedness, a world that is mired in the darkness of evil. Lord, we pray. We pray for the light of Christ to shine in the dark hearts and dark lives of men and women everywhere in our world. That there will be, that there will be no more hate, no more, no more violence, no more evil, no more wickedness. We pray for that world, Lord. That is the world that we long for, the world in which righteousness dwells. Lord, we long for that new earth, that new world in which there is no more evil, that the, where the glory of God is the light that shines from, from east to west, north and south. So Lord, we pray for that world. So we pray, Lord, for your kingdom, for your kingdom of righteousness, peace, love, justice, joy to come in Israel, in Gaza, in Ukraine, in Sudan, in places of the world where there is conflict and, and discord and violence and wickedness and evil. Lord, bring your kingdom. Let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Let your kingdom come, we pray. And so, Lord, in, we pray for the protection of those who are caught in the midst of violent, violence and war. We pray for the children of Gaza. We pray for the people of Israel to protect them from the evils of terror and terrorists and those who seek to to instill terror in the hearts of those people. We pray that you'll protect them from such evil plans. But we pray, Lord, for the people of Gaza and the bombardment that that city, that, 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 that place, that strip of land is undergoing. God, have mercy on those people. Have mercy on them, we pray, O oh Lord. And bring an end to the conflict in the Middle East. And bring peace to that land, we pray. So that these two groups of people, the Jews and Arabs, the Israeli and the Palestinians, will be able to live peacefully on that strip of land. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And hear our prayer, Lord, as we continue to pray for ourselves and for the and for the people in our own hearts, maybe those in our family, and the, indeed those in our spiritual church family. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who are suffering in any way today. We pray for those who have undergone surgery and are uh, for the healing process, for that for, the, for, for effective healing. Lord, we pray for total health. We pray for those who are bereaved and those who are grieving over the loss of a loved one. Lord, remember them in your mercy. And so, Lord, remember your people this day as we bring before you the needs of your, of your people, of our community, of our family. We pray for those who are aged and old and weak and infirmed, those who are unable to get out as they would love to, those who are dependent on carers and, and, and others to look after them. We pray for them. 
And we pray for the carers. We pray for the for grace for them, that you will give them patience and endurance. Give them your grace so that they will care for those under their care, for those that are entrusted to them. Lord, we pray for carers. We pray for nurses, indeed, doctors in the NHS. We pray for all those who are in the care in the industry. That, Lord, you will use them uh, to, bring, to bring peace and comfort and joy and love to those that, to whom they are entrusted to care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so, Lord, we pray. We pray. Uh, for, for, for ourselves, that as we journey today in this world, we ask for your Holy Spirit to guide us. We ask that you will strengthen us for the journey ahead. We pray, Lord, that as we travel through the wilderness of this world, you will provide us with the food that we need, the sustenance that we need from your word, from your sacraments, that as we partake of your word and sacraments, we may be filled, we may be satisfied. You've promised a blessing to those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Lord, we pray that you'll give us a heart to hunger and thirst for you and to find our fulfillment, to, to find our satisfaction in you today afresh and lord we commit we recommit our lives to you afresh today and we ask that you will help us to be more like jesus in all of our relationships in all of our encounters today may we show the love and mercy and kindness and grace of jesus christ to those we meet so that this world will become and be a better place because of your church and your people who live and move and interact with others in the darkness of this world. Help us to bring light to those who are in darkness, in our family, in our community, in our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace and his all-sufficient grace to sustain you today, sisters and brothers. Whatever you're doing, wherever you're going, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day, sisters and brothers.